uh, the, the title of the slide gives it away. Uh, I think what we're going to learn about. Um, but uh, it's going to be running WebAssembly with WASI in Docker, which makes sense for where we are. So take it away. Thank you. Am I, can you hear me properly, or do I need to get a better mic? All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Tibor Vass, and my colleague here is Tony Stigi. We're two engineers on the Docker engine team. Uh, we're maintainers of Docker and uh, maintainers also of a project called BuildKit, which is our next generation builder in Docker. And um, you, might, you might hear about it a little more. And today I want to talk about a little bit our journey with WebAssembly. But first, the question is uh, why, why are two Docker engineers even interested in uh, WebAssembly? Um, and to answer that, let's first talk about a quick overview about what Docker is for those of you who don't know. So can I please get a quick show of hands of who has used Docker? Okay, so pretty much everyone. Uh, <laughs> um, well, so maybe for those who watch this recorded, I'm going to just quickly summarize this as a, a platform where you can build, ship, and run any app anywhere. It's kind of simplistic, but sounds good, and I like it. Um, so with Docker, basically, you can build safely uh, any application. You, you package it all with all of your dependencies. Um, you can deploy quickly the same application that what the author intended and run it in dev test and prod. And so you, you're guaranteed to run those same bits. Uh, and it runs in a sandboxed environment. And it's language and platform agnostic. So real quickly about Wasm, although previously Dan made a presentation about Wasm so, and Wasi uh, as well. So um, I, won't, I will go through this very quickly. But the main focus here is that web uh, WebAssembly is not only about web, it's also about non-web. Uh, in fact, I like to think about the web part of WebAssembly as just being the as secure as JavaScript in the browser aspect. Uh, because if you think about it, when you open a web page, it's, it's, mu it's more secure to open a web page than to download any binary and run it on your laptop. So um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're able to bring that level of sandboxing to the server, that's quite interesting and exciting. Um, so in, what we're more interested in is the, the other part, the sandboxing and, and uh, the basically the, the virtual ISA that WASM is. So one, one great and exciting side effect of the fact that all the languages want to run in the browser is that all of a sudden you have a very low level common layer to all the languages, which, which is Super exciting. So it's designed for portability and security, and it's a standard. Again, WASI, I'm going to go through this very quickly as well. You saw Dan's talk, uh, so uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to stop in a, a lot of times. The main point I want to make here is it's the WASI announcement that got us interested in uh, in in uh, playing even with with WebAssembly. That that's that's the uh, motivation here. <clears throat> So basically, when, Wasm, when you didn't have WASI, WASM alone, you could the Hello World usually is just a, an add operation. So you can't do much apart from heating up a CPU, basically. So you need like host functions, which is described in the WASM spec. Uh, and the problem is uh, the, the browser has all sorts of, all sorts of host functions, and, and it's, none of it is standardized. You can have your own. Um, and, uh, what we want is a portable aspect. And it's, so if you do, no longer have portability, all those great aspects from WASM are, are lost. So WASI is what, what guarantees, because it, it, if it's a standard, it guarantees that it will be portable. So if you have all those, um, all those basically syscalls that your uh, WASM app can rely on. So quick recap is basically WASM maintains the, the, yes, the promise of portability and, and security. So if you're interested, you can probably contribute to WASI and put a link there. Um, and now let's talk about the intersection of both. So how similar are Docker and WASM? Um, well, the most, uh, the most tracking aspect is, is basically uh, the sandbox and, and portability. Um, we like to think of Sandbox as basically an app that's isolated from, from other apps and, and it's limited in what it can access. 
uh, and, and portability is basically supposed to work the same on, it, on any machine. It's portable. Um, so Docker and WebAssembly actually implement this very differently. Uh, Docker uses uh, this concept of containers. Uh, Wasm has uh, basically some guarantees in, in the spec. Um, and uh, for portability, um, basically Docker has multiple multi-platform images. It, it, it bundles the dependencies and it's quite widespread now. It's super popular. Uh, and whereas Wasm has a universal binary, it's a, it's a, it's a standard, at, there's a 1.0 version. And uh, I put a little uh, exclamation mark here for modules uh, for, the, for, for the future. So the great thing about sandbox and portability is if you have those two, you have uh, an amazing property, which is uh, you go from a situation that's, but it works on my machine to uh, you can basically build once and run anywhere, which is very nice. But Docker turns six years old, and it's extremely popular among developers. Uh, in, in fact, it's the number three platform after Linux and Windows, according to this uh, Stack Overflow survey of this year. Um, and, and Wasm is relatively new, and Wasi is like two months old, I think. So my, the, 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 the obvious question here is, is how can we, um, how can we learn, basically? How, what can, what can, whoops, sorry, what can Docker how can Docker help the, the Wasm community? And uh, in order to answer that question, uh, you, can, you can view through this, this lens of these three concepts of build, distribution, and runtime, which also is some, uh, reflects the kind of workflow. Um, so let's first talk about build in Docker. Um, whoops, sorry, I missed. Uh, Basically, what my point here is, um, when when you want to when you want to build an application, you you find say uh, an open source project on GitHub, you download it, you you want to build it, so you follow religiously those instructions. You have to see make here, pip install there, and you have basically a failure. Uh, that happens r relatively often, more often than we than we want to admit it. Um, yeah, in, in fact. Uh, uh, my cousin just texted me this morning from Switzerland saying he's having a build problem and uh, he's hitting some issues. So if you're watching, please listen. Um, the, the, goal, the core of the problem here is an inconsistent environment. You, you don't have the same environment depending on who's running it. So that's, that's why you have these problems. So in order to avoid these, uh, but it builds on my machine uh, problems, um, Docker, Docker build uh, basically allows you to, uh, to, to, to build your application in a reliable way and uh, safely without affecting your host. Like every, nothing changes on your host. Um, and we have this, uh, this file called a Docker file that's, in, that's, uh, quite, that's a quite simple way to describe your, your build graph and it's language agnostic. It doesn't matter which language or build tool you use, sorry clicking everywhere. There's a caching for faster network flow and it's uh, flexible. Um, so again, for those of you who haven't seen a Docker file, I just want to quickly go through this. Basically, you have your source code somewhere in a folder. You have a Docker file. You explain what, uh, what base image you start from. Uh, in this case, it's Ubuntu Bionic. Uh, you install all the dependencies you want with the correct versions. Uh, you put your code inside the, that container, uh, you specify where you want to build, and you run the build commands. And the nice property of, uh, sorry, you execute the build commands here by, um, you execute your, your build, your Docker file here by running docker build, uh, and, and dot to specify where, where all these files are. Um, the nice property of, of this is that you, um, you basically, if, if I build this, uh, I don't need to install anything in, in addition to it. All I need is Docker, and anybody else can, can do the same. So now let's talk about distribution. Um, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. All, my, my main point here is that we have an existing infrastructure uh, with existing uh, image formats, uh, with configs and manifests and, and, uh, and 
you can put your blob, you can uh, address your blobs in them. And uh, all of this exists today. And uh, one relevant point here is that we also support multi-platform images. In fact, I, I, I added Wazi wasn't right here just for, for this talk. So again, the main point is that Docker push and Docker pull, uh, you can Docker push and Docker pull from a Docker registry and it exists, it's been there for, 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 uh, for six years and it's super popular. Uh, you, you have uh, the Docker Hub registry, you have all the cloud vendors, and now even GitHub announced it, I think, last week. So if you want to create your own registry, go ahead. I put the link uh, to the spec. Now, the runtime is uh, basically ContainerD, which is a, a, a project donated to CNCF. So I put some links there. And specifically, if you, if you were interested in Linux containers, uh, RunC is a, a reference implementation of the OCI spec. Uh, I also put a link here. So it, again, if you zoom out, this is, this is the workflow. Of, I build my application, I, I push it, and then I, I, I run it. Uh, now, for the purpose of this talk, uh, WASM and, and the, run, the WASM runtimes are basically all about the runtime. So uh, I, I name a few that I know here. And um, let's, look at, uh, let's look at build. I want to so my point here is I want to I talk a little more about the build aspect and the distribution aspect. So here, if we talk about build, how can, how can uh, we use Docker build to enhance uh, the WASM experience? So first of all, let's look at how you're building WASI apps without Docker. So imagine you have an, an awesome WASI app out there on GitHub. You, you read the README. You, uh, there's a, maybe a requirements list. You install everything that's included there. Either there's a copy of what's today on WASI.dev or it's just a pointer there. So you have to install all your, all your build tools and dependencies like CLang or WASM SDK if you use uh, the, C, uh, the C parts of it. Or if you are doing it Rust, then apparently you need the Rust Nightly if I'm uh, if I'm correct. And all of these basically uh, are, are things you install on your host. And, and, and uh, depending on when you install it or, or how you configured it or what versions they are, they will differ from anybody else. And you, you'll run into those inconsistent environment issues that I talked earlier. You might even need to install uh, other tools than, than just the things you need for WASI, such as Python or gRPC if you need to generate code. And again, different versions. So when you have a mutable environment, you have a higher risk of, of, uh, of breaking changes. So, and that's exactly what Docker solves. So let's look at how we can solve this with Docker. You have a Docker file uh, and, and basically a simple uh, Hello World demo that I, uh, that I took from Wazi. Um, so you can, you can specify again your, your base image, because in this case it's Debian. Um, put all your dependencies, you install all your dependencies, you download, you download your, uh, the, the WASI SDK in this case, you extract it, um, you put your code in there, and you run, uh, you run, you run CLang in this case. So that, that's, that's the description of what you want to run, and you run it with docker build up. Uh, yeah, sorry. So one, one uh, problem here is that basically I created an image, a Docker image, that contains my, uh, my WASM artifact. And it's, if I'm on Linux AMD64, it's a Linux AMD64 image. Uh, so that's not great. I, I, want my, I, I want to I get back my WASM file. So how can I do that? So where's my WASM file? It's in the, it's in the image. So uh, here I basically just uh, took the same Docker file and stripped it for more space. So what you can do in uh, Docker 19.03 is, uh, is the following, is you can extract a build artifact specifically from the container and you have it back on your host. The way you do this is the, the first original stage, you, you can call it the builder stage, you use that with the as builder, and then you create a second stage that you, uh, you start from scratch, which means it's a completely empty container, and you copy the artifact that you wanted from the first builder container into this empty container. So in this, when, when this will build, it, it will build all of your, uh, all of the builder stage, 
uh, uh, get the WASM and then put that WASM file into uh, a, a scratch container at slash. And when I build this, I can specify where to put all the contents of my, of my final image. And here I just specify a directory called alt. And uh, when I run this, I see that in alt I have my, uh, my uh, um, WASM artifact. Uh, one little um, detail here that's important is I was assuming that you had enabled build kit, which you can do so on, on the daemon side as well. But for, for clarity here, I want to uh, show as well how you can enable build kit on the client side in Docker. So it's, a, it's an opt-in because it's the next generation builder. It's an, it's an opt-in feature. Uh, but for this specific uh, use case of extracting a build artifact, you, you need build kit. And um, now I'll pass it on to Tonis, who will talk to you about how to bring all of what I talked about in build further. Thank you. So yeah, so uh, what Tibor showed you right now is like how you can use Docker files to, to build WASM binaries. And that's all like really useful because like you get all those, uh, uh, you get a workflow that's repeatable, but like in Docker, we don't really deal with binaries. We deal with uh, applications. We build them into images, then we deploy them. Uh, so how can we do this? And the first thing to note about uh, when, when approaching this is that Docker is multi-platform already. Like it started with Linux containers, but, and most people use Linux containers, but it also works on Windows. Uh, uh, x86, of course, great support for ARM as well. And, uh, and the way how we add this support in Docker is not that we, we like have like an ARM version of Docker and then ARM version, ARM images in a separate silo. Like the way how we want to think about it is that you build an image, it, it should work from basically in all platforms. It should, uh, uh, you should only work with like one artifact. And I guess the question in here is like how we can add WASM and, uh, and WASI into the same mix and make them basically the same thing as, as far as Docker is concerned. Uh, so the way you work with multi-platform builds in Docker or multi-platform images is that when you're running this Docker build that Tibor showed, there's a flag called Dash's platform. And so you basically specify the platform there, what, what you want the end result to be. And uh, that's how build will, will do the right thing. And this format that this, it takes, it's basically like defined by container D, it's uh, basically it's just like an OSN architecture. So if we look at like what, what it is for WASM, then like uh, WASM is pretty clearly, it's, it's an architecture <coughs> before WASI, we were like really lacking something to, to what to put in the OS. So now we can just like put the OS, put WASI in the same place that we would normally use Linux or, or Windows because WASI is really the thing that provides this syscall interface and it's the, like the API layer that the application is, is targeting. And as I told you before, what we also want to do is we want to create an image that should work uh, like everywhere. So how do you do that? And like, how do you build with, uh, for multiple platforms together? And before we get started on this, we need to mention those two pro projects that you need to use to, to do this uh, workflows. Uh, one is BuildKit that was mentioned already. So this is the next uh, generation builder toolkit that Basically, our newer version of Docker build is so based on, uh, comes with like lots of lots of new, new features that you would want to use anyway, not even if you're like not interested about multi-platforms or not interested about WASM. And the other uh, project is uh, Buildex that we launched uh, just a couple of weeks ago at DockerCon. And what this is, is a, it's a CL, Docker CLI plugin, so it like extends the capabilities of Docker CLI with uh, with some newer and uh, modern build capabilities. Basically, like you can see, it, uh, it does like a like um, like a example of what what uh, Docker build will be in the future. And with those 
things in, in place, what you can do is you can do the regular Docker build and with Dash, uh, when you set the Dash's platform, you just set multiple platforms together, just uh, like uh, almost a perfect format. And uh, what we will do is we will basically take your Docker file and build it for both of them, then stitch them together and, and, uh, and you have the final image. So how does this even work? Like how can you, like normally when you run Docker build, you build for your current architecture only. So the way it works is, is actually like, there, there are different methods how, how we can uh, make it work. Uh, one is just like a QMU emulation that like ships with, together with our desktop products, for example. So when you get like Docker desktop on a, on a Mac like this, there's support for like ARM emulation, for example, out of the box. So you can just, work with ARM directly and we will take care of all the, all the configuration. You don't need to specify anything. Then we support uh, distributed native nodes. So like you can just have two machines on different architectures and the build will just uh, separate the request out and build on both of them, then, then uh, stitch them together afterwards. And for third, we have like pretty good support for cross compilation in straight in Docker files. And uh, basically this is how we will approach the uh, WASI, WASI applications. Like we'll, we would definitely need to cross compile them. So before you saw how Dibar just uh, uh, had like a specific version of the, of, uh, of the compiler in the Docker file that generated uh, wasn't binaries. Uh, but like uh, now let's look at like how can we uh, take this further and basically natively target uh, the values that uh, that the user passes in with Dash's platform. So to do that, what we do in, inside Dockerfile is that we expose a couple of uh, special arguments there that are already there that you don't need to like define like you do with regular arguments that are just filled with, in with correct values and that, uh, that Docker will give, give you. So for example, in here, um, I have two stages in this Dockerfile and uh, the first one says that it's uh, the image that is based on is based uh, should be should come from a uh, platform called build platform. So what this means is that this stage is always the native platform for this machine that's doing the build. So for example, if I run this in, in here, it's uh, like Linux uh, x86. But when I'm running the C lang in here, then it is already seeing uh, something called target platform in here. And what target platform is the, is basically the value that you provide in in Dash's platform. So this is how. This is how you, your application itself can, can pick up uh, what the value is, what the platform is that the user expects as, a, as an end result and uh, basically do the right thing. And I mean, it might be a little bit complicated because like CLang doesn't actually like understand this, this uh, target platform value, for example, and there, there are other, other values as well. But for that problem, what we can do is we can just, uh, uh, we can just use a base image that already has all this magic built in. So for example, in here, I'm not building like, a, like an official uh, like Ceiling image yet. I built actually my own image in here. And uh, why I'm using this image is because this image already has all this cross compilation logic in. This, this image can already see all those uh, uh, like environment variables, these this arguments that the Docker will provide and do the right thing. So in the end, I will just need to go Ceiling with the source file and, uh, and it will just do the right thing. It will either like build for, for, uh, for my regular platform or cross compile to ARM or, or cross compile to WASM. And yeah, basically that's, that's what I just said. Uh, this is the repository where we have a couple of those base images that you can use for, for different languages in, in cross compilation. We have like images for Golang and C and, and now WASM of course as well. So let's just take a look at this. So in action. So in here I have a, just like a simple hello world project. And uh, if I look at the Docker file, then it's actually the same Docker file that I already showed you in the in the slides. So it's a simple C hello world application. What I'm doing in here is again like the first stage is is my native platform. So this is where I'm running my CLang. Uh, I'm allowing the CLang to see this value and, and just the CLang from this, from this image in here 
will just do the right thing. For the second stage, I'm just like copying out whatever I built because like I don't want to have ceiling in my final image and things like that. I just I'm just interested about for uh, about the application. And if I just look at what the, what the application itself is doing, then it's just like a basic hello world uh, with some extra things uh, that I just added in here to like a POSIX like thing to just show like different features of of uh, WASI. So like I'm reading environment variables in here. Then in here, I'm just like looking at what, like, what are the files in my root directory, then like writing a file, and then basically just like doing another read to see that if this file was added or not. So let's just take like the little, little modification so we can see that this demo is actually live. And uh, what we do now is like we just do Docker, Docker build. You can see that. Uh, this is just like a regular Docker. I, I built an image. Uh, I can run it, and and you can see that it just runs. Uh, in, like, this is my. This is just like a regular Docker workflow. So I'm running uh, uh, just like a regular Linux uh, Linux container, Linux AMD64. As you hear my files, like I'm writing a file and it appears in here. So just like regular regular Docker uh, Linux AMD64 image. So now let's take this a little bit further. Let's let's try to build this uh, multi-platform image instead. So I'm going to run basically the same build again. Let's give it a name as well. So let's uh, let's do hello. And um, uh, I have dashboard platform. And in here, let's see. Let's do the AMD64. Let's do ARM one as well, just for fun. And uh, let's do the Wasi Wasm. That we're here about, and uh, and I also want to just push this image straight into register because, like, uh, if you're building multi-platform images, you want them to be you, you want them to be locatable from different machines. So, but, and I'm missing a dot in here. So this one builds. I had the cache for the image, luckily, but uh, but the build. Uh, you can see like the different invocations in here. You can see that the C lang was actually in, okay, invoked like uh, three times in here. So these are the, all the separate compilations for every architecture. Then it finishes up. It uh, it creates all those distribution objects. In the end, it creates this thing we call manifest list that's like the multi-platform image. And in the end, it pushes this all into registry as well. So you can just inspect it right away. So next. Tools inspect, and so I'm just inspecting uh, this image that I just pushed to the hub straight from the hub, and I see that this image is for three architectures. So this is the M64 ARM, and you can see that there's like a buzzy, buzzy image in here now, and this is straight in the hub. Like there's no, there's no like uh, like special special sauce or anything in here. Like it works with, with all the current architecture. Uh, so let's try to run it. I already like like let's let's do the thing that I already did before. Docker run, not tell, but hello. And see that this is this is the Linux in the 64 image like before. I should have a, an ARM machine as well in here. So so. So yeah, so this is this is just an ARM node. Uh, so let's do the same thing in here, Docker run. And so in the ARM node, it will look for the same multi-platform image, but in the end, it will pull only the ARM version of it. So the only the ARM sub image, just only the ARM binary. But it runs exactly the same as as you would expect in like running Docker containers. Uh, so it's the same thing, only the platform in here now is ARM64, not. Uh, not the AMD64. So, but let's look back for this, for this inspect and then like try to figure out like how can we run this thing now? And, uh, and to run this thing, uh, uh, well, you can't run it out of the box, right? Because uh, out of the box, uh, what uh, Docker will do is it will try to run a Linux container. And this definitely is not a Linux container. Uh, this is this is uh, the same distribution format, but the actual binary is a wasn't binary. 
So, but Docker already supports uh, different type of uh, runtimes that it can use to actually, for actually invoking the, the resource. And the way it works uh, in Docker is that uh, Docker is based on uh, container D and container D also has this logic. So, uh, and container D has this shim API that, uh, that can be used to, for example, for other people to create their own versions of a shim and then they can run different types of payloads. Like, like this is, for example, like how Kata containers work or GVisor and, and all, the, all the different formats that you can also run with ContainerD and, and Docker. So, uh, so what we need basically to run this with ContainerD is to, is to have a Wasim uh, shim. And uh, luckily there was just a, a repository made today that has this capability. So two hours. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a, really two hours ago, and and uh, because of that, I, I need to show it through container D, so it, it so it doesn't quite yet work with, through Docker. I, I saw it working through, through Docker as well today, but it like li needed a little bit of hacks to do that. So, but let's let's uh, show this in in container D itself. So container D itself comes with a with a CTR tool, and it's like a little bit not as user friendly as Docker. So I need to like use this cheat sheet to, to figure it out. <laughs> but basically what I'm doing is I'm doing like image pool in here, the CTR, uh, uh, when I'm doing the pool, I need to specify a platform in, in this case, it's uh, Wasi Wasm and I'm building the same image that I just built. So this one is just doing the image pool. Uh, and now let's try to run this with a CTR run. Uh, so this is CTR run, I need to specify the runtime. So this is the runtime, how it picks up the different shim API. And this is, I need to specify the platform again and image, and this is just an ID. And you can see it was uh, really fast and, and it works fine. So it says the same thing, uh, allo wasm, and, uh, and now it recognizes that it is wasi wasm. And you can see that the rest of the things are exactly the same. So before I only had my binary in my, in my root directory, and I'm writing a file foo, and the foo appears in here, exactly the same like secure sandbox experience that, that you would have in regular Docker. Um, thank you. So this was uh, through container D, and like pretty sure it will soon be like this uh, through Docker as well. But uh, so this is very cool if you, for example, like want to schedule like Linux containers and Wasm side by side, for example, and I you know like Houston through Kubernetes, things like that. But like, uh, it's like maybe like a little bit heavy in some use cases for Wasm because like there's a lot, lots of things to, to set up. Uh, like for, for Wasm, we, we don't really, like we can just run it as like a random unprivileged user. So we don't really need the daemon and, and the container D and all, all this for all the use cases. So for that one, there's like this demo application called uh, Docker Wasm. That's, uh, that's basically like a, like it's just a demo application to that has like a simple simple Docker-like experience, but works directly with those Wasm images that I just built. And what's cool thing about this is because like Wasm works basically everywhere. Then this terminal in here, I actually I'm running this in OS X. So actually natively in this laptop, and this is something that we can't do in, in, in containers, for example, because like, Docker can't run uh, like uh, containers natively on macOS. Like even if you use like Docker desktop on a Mac, it's, it's actually like, uh, like running uh, Linux in a, in a VM. So, but, but in here, see what uh, actions I have in here. I have like a LS to list images and I have pool. So let's just try to run it. So I build uh, hello. And what happened here, I just pulled this layer sec, like it was exactly the same as you saw in the, in the other, like the container demos, pull those layers and run it, run the same application that I just built directly on macOS and, and basically it runs in, in anywhere where, uh, just with, a, with the help of a, of a wasm runtime and you can just run it again and, and you can work on with images and stuff like that. So, so the way this works is that uh, we pull down the layers using the, like uh, all the Docker uh, Docker standards and and uh, Docker utilities, and then we invoke it with a uh, with a runtime that already exists. So in this case, for Wasi, 
we are actually like in the end we are invoking it through through the wasm time runtime uh, i've tested this with wasmer as well works works fine in there as well so we can just make it uh, make it uh, optional and uh, what you can also see is that uh, uh, because wasi is safe that this thing in here behaves like totally like a container so it, it, when you're doing the open tier of root in here you're even in in osx you're you're like actually in this sandbox environment that's very similar to Docker container. You don't have access to like this uh, application, although it can open files, it can like work with files, it can, it can do like some crazy things. It's all still sandbox in this container that, uh, that, is, uh, that either Docker or, or this tool will provide it. And let's check, do a little recap. So what you saw is we built an image live for all those three architectures, push to, push to live race to push to hub, uh, and uh, we can run this image on any platform. Uh, Wasm is just a first class platform like, uh, like any other that we currently are supporting. And this is all like live. You can start building your own images with, with Docker and push them today. Like it, it's, uh, it, uh, it works out of the box at the moment. And uh, uh, it actually, it, didn't require like absolutely no changes in, in Docker code for build and distribution part. So build and distribution part is, is, is like, there, there's nothing wasn't specific or anything like this there at all. And for the run part, like I mentioned before, there's this uh, container the shim project now, next to Derek, uh, that in the, you can find it from this URL. So if you, if you compile this, uh, you can use it with container D to to run those wasm images today by specifying this runtime flag and the uh, the the plugin that i showed is uh, is in this address you can just uh, get it uh, and this uh, this runs on like any platform as an unprivileged user no dependency on docker or, or anything like this and, and it's like uh, fine-tuned for for wasm only so it's uh, it will recognize it will only pull uh, wasm image out of the box and things like that and for with that time, I think it back to Divar. Thanks, Thomas. That was a pretty cool demo. Um, so actually, when Wuzzy was announced, um, Docker founder Salman Hikes tweeted this. Uh, it's a tweet about how uh, basically Docker and, and uh, Wasm could integrate fairly well and would run Linux containers and Windows containers and, uh, and, and Wasm uh, containers side by side, essentially. And I, I just find it really cool that basically uh, the, the, the demos you saw today basically fu fulfill this. So that was just about it. I want to talk a, just a quick point about uh, differences in portability between Docker and Wasm. Um, both are portable, but in, a, in, a, in actually a different way. Um, when we talk about portability in Wasm, we mean that the binary itself is universal, it's portable. You can run it anywhere where you, where you have the Wasm time running. <clears throat> and, um, but in Docker, basically, when your app is portable, it means it includes all its dependencies and environment and uh, files, dependencies, etc. So uh, I just want to point out that whatever is the future of uh, the Wasm spec around modules and importing modules, uh, I'm, I just, I'm a little bit um, uh, wary about the potential dependency held that might, that might ensue there. So uh, just to keep that in mind. Uh, a couple of discussion topics or future work or yeah, topics to chat after. Um, it would be interesting to, to, to think also about the, the process model, model like how, how would WASI implement Fork? Uh, I'm sure Dan has thought a lot about that as well, but um, this would allow us to basically implement a Docker exec, uh, which uh, in the Linux world executes a process in the same sandbox that an existing container is. And so although the processes are, are separate and like, they all have their own memory, the, the file systems are shared and the network resources and all that. Um, so yeah, so how would fork work? Would, would that be, uh, you would create a separate instance of, of a WASM? Um, anyway, so that's up for discussion. And 
I want to talk also about BINFIMAT or BINFIMT. I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, it's, uh, it's a not often known thing in Linux. Um, it's basically what Docker for desktop uses to set up QMU as the default ARM emulation for an ARM binary. So basically what this means is that when, you, when your system finds an ARM binary on an x86 machine, uh, it goes through this bin format registration step and it's like, oh, I recognize this is an ARM binary. Let me invoke this command and run it through QMU. So we could do the same thing with WASM. You could have like a main, the WASM on, 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 a, on, a, on a machine and if you, if you set up the, the bin format registration properly, then it could invoke your favorite WASM runtime uh, to, to run that. So that could be pretty cool. Um, on the distribution side, uh, it's quite, it's also very interesting to think about instead of JIT uh, WASM runtimes, so you think about ahead of time WASM compilers uh, in, 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 that build in that build ship run workflow. Well, mainly the build ship part. So if you think of the registry storing the WASM artifacts, the WASM bits, um, instead of sending the WASM bits to, uh, to, uh, to the client that, that requests uh, the WASM payload, the WASM app, the registry could be a little smarter and re recognize that the, the client is, say, an, actually a Linux MD64, and then compile on the fly, and if, or if it has it in cache already, then serve that, but the point is it would compile on the fly um, the WASM application to the native, uh, to the native uh, Linux MD64 with, this, with, the, uh, with the similar guarantees. Um, another, another, another aspect where you could point, uh, put the ahead of time compiler is if you wanted to, uh, uh, instead of getting it at pull, making that at push. So essentially when you, when you build your image uh, and, and you push it to, to the registry, uh, instead of pushing a WASM, uh, a WASM app with WASM bits, you push all the different architectures uh, that it compiles to from WASM. Um, yeah. And another interesting thought here is a, a cool hack that, uh, that we didn't succeed in doing, but essentially is to think of what could a Linux slash WASM platform look like. Um, uh, so there's basically two ways, is you port Linux to WASM, so good luck with that. Um, another interesting way is we've been, we're, we've been quite interested in this uh, Google project, uh, open source project called GVisor. Uh, it's basically a, a uh, Linux implement, a user space implementation of Linux in Go, so that's interesting. Um, and it allows you to basically their main use case is essentially to uh, uh, isolate the host kernel from your from your containers because regular Linux containers essentially share the same kernel. And if you put a user space kernel in between, uh, it, it's it's basically another level of security. Uh, but we could use those bits of GVisor to essentially use the the sandboxing to use that as a sandboxing mechanism for for the for the WASM runtime. So the problem is that GVisor is, is uh, 64 bit, so and was missed 32 bits. So you would need to try to port GVisor to 32 bits. And looking at the code, it's uh, it's uh, there's a lot of 64 bit assumptions. Uh, another way is to uh, instead try to try to see what the WASM 64 uh, st uh, state is. And uh, I couldn't, I didn't manage to to uh, to get muzzle compile with wasm64 but uh i don't know maybe someone can help me <laughs> um so because gvisor is in go we would need to have like a go uh go wasm runtime to integrate with basically when when you when you want to like do memory uh memory operations to use the gvisor's uh, memory primitives and uh yeah so that's just a couple of cool ideas uh, and yeah, I just put a couple of couple of links here for uh, the various things we talked about. Uh, and uh, yeah, just a note that we're hiring. So if you're interested, feel free to contact us. And uh, thank you very much. We're open for questions.
So we have time for some questions before uh, we have about until 8, 20, 8, 30 before we get kicked out. So let's use that time. So I was really excited to hear about the fact that you can now extract artifacts out of a Docker image. But um, that sounds great for static binaries, but how does it play with, um, with the fact that sometimes you might need like additional dependencies other than just like an artifact, maybe like some .so files, you know, for like, you know, a Linux um, thing that you're trying to build. So is there any way to like extract additional like platform specific um, files or libraries as a part of the artifact? So uh, if I understand the question correctly, you're saying here, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to just extract my demo.wasm artifact. I want anything that it, it, that it needs, on. that it depends on. Uh, if we have maybe uh, wasm modules, then maybe all the other modules that it depends on, et cetera. So what you would need to do in, in this workflow would be to add, a, uh, add more of those files. Like after app demo.wasm, okay. before the slash, you would add more of those, or multiple copy dash from equals builder lines, and basically, you put the it. Entire thing. Yeah, it's much easier if all of it is already in a folder in your previous stage. That way, you just have one line where you put that folder in. Uh, yeah. Uh, I had another question. question. Um, at the very end, you mentioned about the um, experimenting with the ahead of time compiler. Um, experimenting with the ahead of time compiler. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you tried? Have you played around with uh, the thing that Fastly recently Lucet? open source Lucet? Uh, I have. Uh, I haven't played extensively with it. But uh, I've tried it when, when it was announced, yeah. Any other questions? To me or to Tonis, by the way? Oh. Um, the Builder X stuff, does that work with uh, Docker for desktop? I'm sorry, what? Does it work with Docker for desktop on the Mac? The, the first part, I, I, Build X. Oh, Build X. Builder X. So, so BuildX is a, uh, one part of it is that it's uh, like a CLI plugin so that like it extends Docker itself, like you get like, as you saw, I run uh, Docker BuildX and this is a new feature that like CLI plugins is a new feature in, in Docker, uh, like, the, like the release that's currently in beta. So it, it will be in the, in the next release. Uh, or as a standalone, you can just use it directly and, it, oh. and you can basically use it in like uh, with any Docker version as well. Like you, you, you can just. Yeah, it even works with older versions. Yeah. Any more questions? No? All right. All right, another round of applause. <laughs> cool, so it's, it's 8.04, 8.05. We can stick around for another 20, 25 minutes uh, as we tidy up. Um, feel free to socialize, uh, talk to the speakers, um, and just another plug for next month's meetup at Google, uh, June 25th uh, over at Spear. So if you're interested in